What's up guys, welcome to the video. I'm Jade from fourwheeldriveguide.com and today I'm discussing some fundamentals of your four-wheel drive system. Yes, we're going to look at the various components that makes up a four-wheel drive. We'll look at the variations between a permanent and a part-time four-wheel drive and later on we'll look at the proper procedure on how to engage your four-wheel drive system. So if you're starting out and you'd like to know more about four-wheel drives, this is a good place to start. Perhaps you've been off-roading for a couple of years and you might need some clarity on one or two things. Or perhaps you're a veteran and you just enjoy binge-watching four-wheel drive content. So whatever your expertise or your experience level is, I'm sure there's something here for all of you. And I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome back to the video guys. Okay, so a four-wheel drive vehicle is essentially a vehicle that consists of two axles, one in the front, one in the rear. The vehicle has a front differential, it has a rear differential, and it has a transfer case. If it can engage low range, it's a four-wheel drive. Let's now look at the components in a bit more detail. Here we can see we have the front axle, that's your front differential, your front drive shaft, this is your transmission. Let me just zoom out a little bit. That's your transmission. Okay, here we have the transfer case, which is connected to your rear drive shaft that sends the torque all the way to the rear differential positioned on the rear axle. All right, so the diffs on the axles manages the torque distribution to the wheels and it always follows the line of least resistance. The diffs role is to automatically allow a difference in rotational speed um, on the wheels and that is very important for cornering. When driving in a straight line, both wheels will receive equal torque. The diffs consists of a pinion gear, a ring gear and a set of differential gears. A front wheel drive will have a front differential a rear wheel drive will have a rear differential and a permanent four wheel drive will have a third differential position in the center. A part time four wheel drive, as in this case, only consists of a front and a rear differential. So torque is received from the engine and is sent to the differentials via the drive shafts. So here we have the drive shafts that is connected to your transfer case and it sends the torque to the axles, front and rear. The drive shaft transfers the torque and the engine rotation into vehicle motion when you shift into drive. They are made of steel and is a cost effective and extremely durable material um, that ensures that it functions optimally throughout the or most of the lifespan of uh, your four wheel drive. Okay, so here we have a U-joint that connects your transmission to your drive shaft, also connects your drive shaft to your differentials, front and rear. So the U-joint is a cross-shaped piece of metal with bearings in between, or bearings at each end, and that allows for lateral and side-to-side -side movement of the drive shaft. See, a bad U-joint can cause clunking or jerkiness while driving, especially when you're letting off the accelerator or when pressing the accelerator. It can also result in vibrations at certain speed um, and strange noises coming from the rear or the center of the vehicle. So make sure that you regularly inspect the U-joint, the seeing that there are bearings inside there. And we can see this one has seen better days. I should probably replace this one soon. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the transfer case. So the transfer case receives the torque from the engine via the transmission and sends it to the axles via the drive shafts. The transfer case also increases the torque through low ratio gears um, when you engage for low. 
It also distributes the torque 50 50 to the front and the rear differentials when either in four in H4 or in four low. So your transfer case locks the front and the rear drive shaft to function as one complete unit and it allows them to rotate at the same speed. So that will be applicable in a part time four wheel drive and a full time four wheel drive when you lock your center diff. So you only engage the transfer case by selecting H4 when surface traction is low and when more traction is needed. So when driving on sand, snow, ice, mud or grass. Any slippery surface where you need maximum traction on all four wheels. So here we have H2, H4 and L4. So H2 means that the vehicle is in two wheel drive mode, usually the rear wheels. Um, so only two wheels are powered um, That is only available on a part-time four-wheel drive. So two, H2 is meant for high traction surfaces uh, Such as in and around town on pavements and highways where traction is good Then we have H4 um, Which stands for um, High range four-wheel drive. So you always want to make sure that you drive a part-time four-wheel drive in H2 as I mentioned earlier on, on a high traction surface Make sure, or make sure your center diff is unlocked on a full-time four-wheel drive. So um, this is because when you drive H4 on a high traction surface, you run the risk of drivetrain binding. So what happens is wind-up will occur um, in your three, in your drive shafts, and that's when potential energy has no way no way to release. Um, so that means that there's not enough slip. Um, on the wheels and this is important to allow a part-time four-wheel drive to function properly um, You need a certain amount of slippage on the wheels. So then the energy is then transferred back into um, Your drive shaft and this can result in catastrophic uh, drivetrain damage you corner on a high traction surface the front inner wheels um, rot Rotate slower than the front outer wheel and the rear inner wheel rotates slower than the rear outer wheel. So the front uh, outer wheel has to cover the widest circumference of all the wheels so then we have four low uh, four low is for extreme off-road or for very challenging um, terrain where maximum torque is required at the wheels all four wheels that's when you'll engage four low four low uses uh, low ratio gears and as a general rule um, you do not you don't want to exceed 10 miles per hour when in four low but you should always consult your owner's manual for the exact figures there because each four-wheel drive is slightly different so the four low gears basically allows the vehicle to utilize all the available torque and power easier without overloading the engine um, and the transmission which could eventually overheat or cause uh, transmission failure Every single four-wheel drive, irrespective if it's part-time or full-time four-wheel drive, has a front diff, it has a transfer case, and it has a rear differential. You will always have a front drive shaft and always have a rear drive shaft. So part-time four-wheel drive, essentially, the torque is received from the engine, it's transferred to the transmission, and then through your rear drive shaft to your rear differential where the diff will then manage the power between the two rear wheels. A part-time four-wheel drive is normally in 2H, so when you're driving on a high traction surface or when you're driving in and around town where traction is good, you will remain in 2H. Okay, only when surface traction is low will you engage 4H. Differential basically is the component that allows your left wheel and your right wheel to rotate at differing speeds or rotational speeds and that is important for cornering because when you're cornering the outside wheel has to cover a wider circumference to the inside wheel time for wheel drive essentially it has a front diff a center diff and a rear differential it also has a transfer case 
So the nice thing about a full-time four-wheel drive is it's designed to drive safely on a mixture of high and low traction surfaces. And this is achieved by means of the center differential, which allows for a difference in rotational speed between the front and the rear drive shafts. So a full-time four-wheel drive is always in four high, always in four high. You cannot engage 2H mode with a full-time four-wheel drive. Once the 4H is engaged and the center diff lock is locked, then the 50% of power that is split between the front and rear axles will then be split 25%, 25% to each wheel. That's in an ideal situation um, or when driving in a straight line. However, when cornering, the differential will then send more power to the wheel of the So why isn't every single vehicle just built with, with permanent four-wheel drive? I don't understand. It's a no-brainer. My dream one day is that every single vehicle is built as a permanent four-wheel drive. So how do you know what the correct operational procedure is for your specific four-wheel drive? Well, there's only one way of telling and that's your owner's manual. You need every four-wheel drive owner needs to do this at least once because all four-wheel drives are not built the same. Okay? So Get your owner's manual out, flip to the page that explains the proper operational procedure for your specific four-wheel drive. Make sure you understand that procedure well um, and follow that procedure to the T. Okay? To shift from H2 to H4, you need to reduce your speed to less than 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour. You need to move the front drive control lever, that's the kotkiri like we call it, or the short shift. So when moving from 2H to 4H, no need to depress the clutch, okay? Um, if you have trouble shifting in cold weather, reduce your speed or stop the vehicle as a result. Shifting from back from H4 to H2, simply move the front drive control lever. This can be done at any vehicle speed. You need not depress the clutch pedal. Shifting between H4 and L4, that's low range. You need to stop the vehicle or reduce the speed to less than 8 km per hour or 5 miles per hour. With your foot off the accelerator pedal, depress the clutch pedal and move the front drive controller lever. To shift from L4 to H4, depress the clutch again and move the front drive control lever. This can be done at any vehicle speed. So, simple as that, follow that procedure, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches and a lot of money. Right guys, thanks for watching. I hope I added a bit of clarity on how your four-wheel drive system functions. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you watch the next one which discusses uh, solid front axle versus independent front suspension. Until next time, stay safe.